Hey everybody, welcome back to SpaceCast, AGI's video podcast. It's been a while since we've made an episode, but today we have uh, Bob Hall, who's been here before. Bob has been with us many times, and actually, Bob, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, Bob is the Pleasure. technical director for the ComSpoc, the Commercial Space Operations Center. And when we talked about doing this, uh, Bob actually forgot that the name was SpaceCast, and I think... I think he's been on it more than anybody except for me. So uh, maybe we'll change the name, Bob, for you. Thanks for coming. All right. And uh, also on today for his first time joining us is Jeff Cornelius. Jeff is an operator at the ComSpoc, the Commercial Space Operations Center. And Jeff has been in the space business for a long time. Started off his career in the Air Force. Correct me if I get this wrong as I go, Jeff. Uh, you worked in, in Intel. You worked in R&D yep. and operations. So really, you've, you know, through all kinds of different programs in the almost the entire life cycle. So a lot of great relevant space experience. And now you are one of the daily operators doing the observations in the ComSpoc. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming, guys. And today you are going to show some things that you've seen recently that is a good example of space operations, a responsible version of space operations. Is that a fair statement, Bob? I would say it's a great example of responsible space operations. Awesome. Awesome. Now, Jeff, you prepared a slide and then you're going to give us a little bit of a demo to talk about what you guys saw. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let's let's see what you got. Sure. What we're going to talk about today is, uh, like Bob said, a, a recent example of responsible space operations. Because we are tracking things non-cooperatively uh, when we track uh, satellites in the Commerce Block, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen or what satellites are doing. So uh, for this particular example, right here on this slide I have, you know, we tracked and monitored a successful satellite disposal. But um, coming into that event, we had no idea that's what it was going to be. So I'm going to walk you through just the events that happened and how we were able to determine that that's what it was. Uh, when it first started out, all we saw initially was just, you know, a satellite orbit raising event of some kind, some maneuver that just started raising some of major axis of the orbit. And then we saw additional ones after that, and then some more up to four. And then after about a day later, we saw some other orbit changing events that had occurred. And um, so as we stepped through this process, it, it started to look more and more like, you know, a satellite disposal. And we were able to verify that at the beginning of the process through our visual magnitude analysis. Okay, so I talked to you about some of the maneuvers we saw and, and how we were able to determine that. Um, but to start with, we'll just show you, first of all, a brief visualization of what that looks like in uh, 3D space. So this is, these are representations of orbits in an Earth fixed frame. So it shows the orbit as if the Earth was stationary underneath it. And since these are geostationary satellites, they kind of just uh, hang out over a certain portion of the Earth at all times. So as we play this, we can kind of see there it is in its orbit, and now it does this maneuver and starts to drift outside of its geostationary box, which is this green box right here. And so this is what we watched as we went through. And one thing to note here is that as it passes these various other satellites in geostationary orbit, uh, one of our standard ComSpoc products is a conjunction analysis. So in addition to monitoring the satellite itself and calculating out the maneuvers, we were seeing, we also were able to provide uh, conjunction assessment, conjunction analysis to see if there was any kind of potential risk of it colliding with something as it started to drift off of its original station. So you were doing that c conjunction assessment in near real time, as soon as you'd get observations about maneuvers, you'd be able to use your new state vector to run new collision avoidance runs. Is that true? Yes, that is true. In fact, after the first maneuver we saw, we did find that there was a predicted conjunction of uh, just over 40 uh, kilometers uh, uh, from one of its neighbors. And so we were monitoring that closely. And then it did a second maneuver and that conjunction went above 50, which our threshold is 50. So we only screened to 50 kilometers. Uh, but so that conjunction was kind of mitigated by that second maneuver. But yes, we were able to track that and monitor that conjunction in real time as it was doing each subsequent maneuver. So let's go over to um, this page here. So here is an analysis page uh, within our Commerce Spoc uh, Operations Center that shows the uh, longitude of this satellite. So as you can see, these blue lines here represent each subsequent maneuver. So we saw it's just hanging out the, the constant longitude. It does a maneuver and the longitude starts to change. Does a second one, 
and it keeps on changing as each subsequent maneuver happens. So all four of these maneuvers are pretty significant such that it changed its longitude value and started to drift in longitude. Then about a day gap happened and we saw these other somewhat larger in time maneuvers so that the distance in time was a little bit bigger, but the magnitude as far as how much it changed the orbit was not that big at all. And so we were, you know, still don't know for sure what those maneuvers are. However, um, we do know that as satellite operators retire their spacecraft, one of the requirements for them to do so is to, you know, get rid of their excess fuel. So that may be something they were doing, just uh, venting fuel to empty their fuel tanks. It could have been that they were trying to put it into some kind of a spin or something like that as far as their attitude control system. We don't really know, but it is consistent with typical uh, satellite operations procedures as you're retiring a satellite. And if you continue with our analysis, uh, you can do analysis not just on the single satellite itself, like I showed you in the previous tab, but this is a page that shows uh, an analysis of the entire neighborhood, what we call the neighborhood, which is about um, a few 20 degrees or so around that satellite. And you can see that uh, this graph here is semi-major axis versus longitude. So down here in the x-axis is longitude and in the y-axis semi-major axis. So there's no time component here in this graph, but it does show that um, here in the green is the Himawari satellite we're looking at. And it's kind of just hanging out there at a certain longitude um, and certain semi-major axis not changing. And then it steps up here to a semi-major axis and it steps up again, steps up again, steps up again. And these are those four maneuvers we saw. So we can visualize through this plot here that change in semi-major axis as it raised itself above the standard geostationary orbit such that it started drifting. This is typical behavior of what you would expect from somebody at geo altitude getting rid of something like you said. But how often do you see something like this happen? So um, it's, it depends. Um, we see satellites start to drift um, frequently, uh, but, but satellites can drift for any number of reasons. Um, a lot of times there'll be uh, an operator that needs to hold down a specific geostationary spot. Um, so those spots are assigned by international treaty. And so that satellite, they may be wanting to launch a new satellite to that spot. So they'll drift the satellite over to that spot to hold its position. So it'll drift and it'll stop. Um, Saving the seats. So Yes. So there's a couple of reasons why a satellite would start to drift like this. Um, and so that's why, as we went through this analysis, we had to verify that it wasn't just drifting to another spot, but that it was indeed a disposal of that satellite that was left up in the quote unquote graveyard orbit, the supersync orbit. Um, so we'll see both types of maneuvers. We'll see ones that will drift from one slot to another slot and then stop, or we'll see ones that will start to drift and then end up in the uh, graveyard orbit and that happens not not super frequently but you know you'll probably see once a month twice a month maybe depending yeah a couple times a year maybe for sure mm. the interesting thing about that plot you're showing you notice all the neighbors uh the satellite neighbors uh, remain down they're all down at 42164 which is the same major axis for geo while himawari stepped it up and stepped it up and, and every time it stepped it up it began drifting further and further west because it was now up above geo. Can you tell, what is that number at the end, Jeff? How high above geo did they get? That is about 42,500. Yeah, it was 42,150. So so. 300 plus above yeah. geo, which is where you, what you want to do. Yep. Very cool. Uh, and then the plot below, you can see the, the longitude over time. Yeah, so this is the longitude over time. So you can see as it starts to do these step maneuvers, that's when it starts to drift off in longitude. Right, but it's, too, it's higher, so it doesn't matter. Correct. Right. The other thing I had mentioned in the previous uh, tab we looked at was those uh, long duration but low thrust maneuvers that we weren't quite sure of what they were doing. Uh, you can actually see those show up in these plots here. This is an inclination plot, so it shows the inclination, you know, the tilt of its axis above the equator, um, as for lack of a better understanding of it, uh, inclination can change through a cross-track maneuver. And so you see the inclination be pretty much steady while it's doing these maneuvers that changes its longitude. But then after its longitude is pretty, its longitude rate is pretty constant, then you see the inclination start to change. And so we were able to kind of verify that whatever it was that satellite was doing was 
affecting its cross track in some way because we saw its inclination change ever so slightly. It's not a huge change by any means. So again, those were very small thrust maneuvers, probably something around like getting rid of fuel or taking out momentum from the momentum wheels or something like that. So one more thing I wanted to point out. Uh, so the final piece of this whole puzzle, again, going back to kind of determining if it's a disposal of a dead satellite or if it's a relocation to another, another geo spot is to determine um, stability of the satellite. So typically um, a visual magnitude signature, we call it, where you'll look at the visual magnitude of your observations over time will look something like this. It'll have this like mountain peak here in the middle where at the beginning of the night, it's very um, higher uh, in, in value. And then it goes low, 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 and then back to higher in value. And you'll see that every single time, just like that. But when it's, that's when it's three axis stabilized. So when it's no longer three axis stabilized, when it's just tumbling or spinning in some way, we see different optical signatures. And so we were able to verify, again, looking at just this pattern here, and then these two nights after this set of maneuvers, and you can see that it has somewhat lost that typical pattern. It, it's still there a little bit, you can kind of see it, but it's starting to lose that. And that's because as the satellite's no longer controlled, if it if it's really is a dead satellite, it's no longer controlled, so they no longer maintain that three axis stabilization. So they just kind of let it start to drift as, various perturbations and forces act on it. And so you kind of lose that typical pattern. It starts to get all fuzzy all the way through here. So that's how we verify that it is, in fact, a disposal of a retired satellite and not just moving it to another location. Right, so, so I don't know, what did the final drift rate get to be, do you know? Four degrees a day, maybe four and a half degrees a day? relative to geo. So when satellites drift around, uh, relocate, um, sometimes they'll go a degree a day, two degrees a day, maybe three degrees a day. Uh, it, you know, for 98% of the relocations, they're under three degrees a day. So a couple of things, you see this thing drifting west. Satellites can drift east, drift west. Drifting west is kind of toward the graveyard because it's higher. If you could turn sideways, we can see that. Yeah, we look along the belt, you see they've gone up higher than the belt. Um, and then if you play this, we'll probably see the next few maneuvers, right? Yes. Um, and then um, the, other, the other indicators, you know, we're looking at a satellite that's 14 years old. So it's 14 years old, which is kind of getting a little long in the tooth for uh, most satellites. And it's starting to do maneuvers to go up above geo. And then it does not one, but two, then three, then four. Uh, so the, the whole puzzle fit, right? Yeah, so I'm going to play this uh, 3D viz back again, just so you can see the whole thing. And so, again, going back to everything we talked about, it's in its orbit. It's doing normal operations. Uh, which one is it? The yellow one right there, right? It's the yeah. yellow, yellow one right here in the center of the frame. And there's that first maneuver that kicks it out above geo. And you'll see these lines, these lines kind of like our projection lines out to the geo belt. And you'll see them getting longer and longer as it does more maneuvers because it's going higher and higher above geo. So, so there's that, another one. That little line connecting it is the altitude higher than geo, right? Yes. That's cool. So there you have it. That's an example of a pretty standard um, and safe and responsible disposal of a satellite. Very cool. So uh, we were talking earlier and it sounds like you guys see this stuff, not this specific thing like we said all the time, but you see a lot of interesting things going on in space. And we think that you guys are gonna be coming back uh, on a more regular basis, showing some of these things. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, catastrophic or groundbreaking uh, space operations. I think you guys get a little numb to seeing this stuff because you do it every day. But I think it'd be cool if people get to see some of these other things that you are observing going on in orbit. So uh, I look forward to you guys coming back. Bob, maybe next time you can uh, re help me rename the, the video podcast or... 
But you don't like Space Cast? <laughs> well, you don't. You didn't remember it, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just giving Bob a hard time because it's fun. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Did you have anything else to add um, about this topic or another one of something else that we might see from you guys in the future? Uh, not for me. We'll keep you guessing. Yeah, all right. Yeah, not, <laughs> nothing to add here. Um, uh, hopefully, Very we'll get to be back and show you some more things. Yeah, that's a really cool example. And it lets people who don't know what these things look like, gives them an insight into the kind of things you see, and then also what a responsible disposal looks like, which was interesting for me because I did not know a lot of what you were showing. So it's very cool. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. All right. See you.